Number 140. The length of a rectangle is 7 more than its width. If the area of the rectangle is 120, what is the perimeter? Let's begin with a picture. Let's draw a rectangle. So here's the length and here's the width of the rectangle. The area of a rectangle is length times width, and the area is 120. Now, we're told that the length of the rectangle is 7 more than its width. So L is 7 plus W. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to replace L with 7 plus W. So we have 120 is equal to 7 plus W times W. So now, we have one equation with one variable, which means we could solve for W. Let's distribute W to 7 plus W. So we're going to have 7W plus W squared. Now I'm going to move 120 to the other side. And then I'm going to rearrange the equation. So I have 0 is equal to W squared plus 7W minus 120. So now we need to factor. Let's look for two numbers that multiply to negative 120, but add to the middle coefficient, 7. So if we divide 120 by 1, we're going to get 120. If we divide it by 2, we'll get 60. If we divide it by 3, we're going to get 40. 120 divided by 4 is 30. If you divide it by 5, that's going to be 24. If we divide it by 6, we'll get negative 20. If we divide well, 7 doesn't go into 120, but we can divide 8 into it. Negative 120 divided by 8 is negative 15. Notice that these two differ by 7. But to add up to positive 7, we need positive 15 and negative 8. So to factor this expression, it's going to be w minus 8 times w plus 15. So we're going to set w minus 8 equal to 0 giving us one possible answer, w equals 8. If we set w plus 15 equal to 0, clearly w cannot be negative 15. You can't have a negative side left, so we can omit that answer. So now that we know what the width of the rectangle is, we can now calculate the length of the rectangle. So let's plug in our answer into this equation. L is going to be 7 plus w or 7 plus 8. So the length of the rectangle is 15. So now we can calculate the perimeter. The perimeter of the rectangle is the sum of the four sides of the rectangle. So L plus L is 2L, W plus W is 2W. So this is the formula that you need to calculate the perimeter of the rectangle. So it's 2 times L where L is 15, and 2 times W where W is 8. 2 times 15 is 30, 2 times 8 is 16, so 30 plus 16 will give us 46. So D is the correct answer for this problem. That's the perimeter of the rectangle. Number 141. The circumference of circle B in the figure below is 16 pi. What is the area of the shaded region rounded to the nearest whole number? So B is the center of the circle since it's called circle B. In order to calculate the area of the shaded region, we need to calculate the area of the circle and subtract it by the area of the triangle. The area of the circle is pi r squared. The area of the triangle is 1 half base times height. Notice that the base of the triangle is basically the radius of the circle and the height of the triangle is also the radius of the circle. The radius of the circle is the distance between the center of the circle and any point on a circle. So we could replace B and H with R. So we have 1 half R times R, or just R squared. So what we need to do is calculate the radius of the circle. How can we do that? Now we're given the circumference of the circle. 
the circumference of the circle is 2 pi times the radius. And the circumference in this example is 16 pi. Dividing both sides by 2 pi will give us r. So the pi's will cancel. r is going to be 16 divided by 2, which is 8. So now that we have the radius of the circle, we can plug it in into this expression to get the answer. Now, 8 squared is 64. And 1 half of 64 is 32. So the exact answer is 64 pi minus 32. Now, the value for pi is 3.14159265. So if you take that number, multiply it by 64, you should get 201.06. And then if you subtract that by 32, you should get 169.06. But we're going to round our answer to the nearest whole number. So the area of the shader region is approximately 169 square units. So that's the answer. Number 142. In the figure below, C is the midpoint of segment AD and AB is 50% longer than BC. What is the length of segment BD? Well, what do you think we need to do in this problem? I think it's best to start with this expression. AB is 50% longer than BC. So let's write an equation. AB is 50% longer than BC. How can we write that? If something is 50% longer, it's going to be 1 plus 50% or 0.5 as a decimal. So AB is going to be 1.5 times the value of BC. Now, BC, we know it's equal to 2Y based on what we see here. So AB is 1.5 times 2Y, which means that it's 3Y. Now, our goal in this problem is to determine the length of segment BD. So if we can calculate the value of Y, we can do so. C is the midpoint of segment AD. So that means that segment AC is equal to segment CD. They have the same length. Now, AC is basically the sum of AB and BC. AB is 3y, BC is 2y, and CD is 9y minus 16. So 3 plus 2 is 5, and so this is what we have. Now, what I'm going to do is subtract both sides by 9y. So 5y minus 9y is negative 4y, and that's equal to negative 16. Now, let's divide both sides by negative 4. So negative 16 divided by negative 4 is 4. So now we have the value of y. y is equal to 4. So at this point, we can calculate the length of each segment. So 3y, that's 3 times 4, that's 12. 2y, 2 times 4 is 8. And then 9y minus 16. We don't really need to plug in y for that, because we know that ac is 20, which means that cd has to be 20. So if you were to plug in 4, into 9y minus 16, you should get 20. Our goal is to calculate the length of segment BD. So that is, let me use a different color. So here it is on the line. So as we can see, segment BD is the sum of segment BC and CD. Now, BC has a length of 8. CD has a length of 20, so segment BD has a total length of 28, which means answer choice C is the right answer. Now, before we move on to this question, I do want to let you know that for those of you who are looking for more difficult geometry problems, I have like an eight-hour SAT video. It's on my Patreon page. If you go to patreon.com slash tutor with no spaces, you can find it there. The first two hours 
You could find it free on YouTube, but if you want the entire eight hour video, it's on patreon.com. And the geometry problems will be found in the eight hour video, not in the, the two hour video that I have on YouTube. So feel free to take a look at that if that interests you. Now let's start with this problem, 143. A cylindrical tank filled with water has a height of 24 inches and a diameter of 16 inches. How many cups of water can be filled from this tank if each cup can hold 134 cubic inches of water? Go ahead and try this problem. Now let's draw a picture of the cylindrical tank. So I'm just going to draw a generic cylinder. So we have the height of the tank, it's 24 inches. And we're given the diameter of the tank, which is 16 inches. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared. That's a messed up looking r. It's pi r squared times the height. Now what we need to do in this problem is calculate the volume of the cylindrical tank and then divide it by the volume of each cup. And that will give us the number of cups that we can fill with water. So let's say the tank is full of water. What we need to do is calculate the radius of the cylinder, which is going to be half of the diameter. So half of 16 is 8. So the volume is going to be pi times r, or rather r squared, which is 8 squared, times h, h is 24. So this will give you 1,536 pi cubic inches. Now let's multiply 1536 by pi. I'm going to use the exact value of pi. So the volume of the cylinder is 4,825.486 cubic inches. Now let's divide that value by the volume of each cup. So if you divide that answer by 134, you should get about 36.01, which means we can fill at least 36 cups if this tank is full of water. Therefore, D is the right answer. 